Hi everyone, imagine a world where a simple photo from your smartphone can diagnose life-threatening diseases. A place where algorithms can predict with uncanny accuracy whether a drug will benefit you before you even take it. Believe it or not, this isn't a far-off future. It's today's reality, thanks to AI's transformative impact on healthcare. The future will be even more astonishing as AI helps doctors and eventually all of us transcend human limitations. Keep watching as we dive into this revolution. This video has three parts, streamlining diagnoses, personal personalized treatment, and future medical capabilities. Be sure to stick around for the third section as it should be very interesting. Part 1. Streamlining Diagnoses The current healthcare system in Canada, as in much of the developed world, revolves around general practitioners or family doctors and then specialists that know a lot about certain conditions or diseases. While your family doctor can answer everyday questions, the more unusual conditions are referred to specialists. And there's a good reason for this. Medicine is so complicated that, that in order to effectively diagnose or treat really complicated conditions, you have to have a lifetime of study. We would all rather be treated by a doctor with 30 years of experience than someone who's just five years out of med school. This is because medicine is currently expert-based rather than data-based. Put another way, it's basically an art and not a science. Apologies to all the doctors in the room. Actually though, this makes sense. We don't have a lot of tools to directly observe the human body. Of course, we have all manner of radiological scans, but that doesn't tell us what's happening at a chemical level, at the level of individual cells. You have to do surgeries and biopsies to get that level of detail. So doctors are having to diagnose conditions purely from the outside just based on their experience of what they've seen before, combined with the somewhat unreliable information from the patient themselves. So it's no wonder that specialists have to take a lifetime of study to really understand all the nuances of their field and be able to take leaps of logic when there's almost no evidence to go by. I contrast this with computer programming, for example. As a computer scientist, you can, in theory, go deeper and deeper into what's really happening inside a computer and really observe everything. And medicine doesn't act that way. You have only coarse-grained tools at your disposal. Another aspect of Western medicine is that it's heavily oriented towards what's physically wrong or sometimes mentally wrong and what are the drugs that can be used to treat that. Western medicine doesn't often take into account physical aspects, mental aspects, as well as emergent properties of what's going on in the patient's body. We usually associate more holistic disciplines like naturopathic approaches or traditional Chinese medicine as the place to turn when you're trying to treat the whole body at once. Put another way, Western medicine relies on specialists, but specialists lead us down a very particular path, the one that they've specialized in and studied for decades. It would be much better to look at the whole picture in that level of detail, but that's far too much to ask of any human doctor. Which begs the question, what would an AI doctor look like? Early versions of this would just be a database where a human doctor can look up details of conditions or supply a set of symptoms and get the AI's opinion on what might be going on. And we've already seen systems like this, such as IBM's Watson. After Watson beat Ken Jennings in Jeopardy, IBM repurposed the machine to act as a medical expert system. An AI doctor can act as a generalist, and yet a generalist that has seen studied and memorized all the details of documented patients that it can get its hands on. Let's take analysis of radiological images as an example. When someone is getting a CAT scan or an MRI to look for tumors, the results of that scan are sent to a human radiologist who specializes in basically differentiating tumors from healthy tissue in a scan. But this is one of the first areas where AI can be really helpful. You have to train the AI with tons and tons of inputs, of course. But once you've done that, it actually beats human experts at identifying cancer. For colorectal cancer, for example, human experts are about 96.9% accurate, while AI is about 98% accurate. This means that the AI is likely to catch those tumors at an earlier stage, and therefore intervention can begin for that patient even earlier, and they'll have an improved prognosis. The way I think about it is this. AI doesn't think like humans. While a human has to figure out patterns with years of experience, lets them shortcut the thinking or identify positive or negative reasons that a diagnosis might be correct, an AI can effectively look at every example that it's ever seen and compare it against those. This works really well for very complicated search spaces. And AI is extremely good at this type of problem. In fact, the FDA in the US has already approved 420 different algorithms based on AI in the domain of imaging alone. There's an interesting example in the case of Kawasaki disease, which affects young children and can be fatal if untreated. The symptoms mirror that of a lot of other illnesses that kids might have, so it often goes underdiagnosed. But some researchers were able to train a model of Kawasaki disease that apparently just requires the doctor to to take a picture of the kid with their smartphone and makes the diagnosis based on that. I assume it also takes in the patient's file of information because surely that wouldn't be enough to diagnose a complicated disease like this. But the point is that AI is extremely good at picking up on very subtle cues, very small changes in the Pareto front and performing an accurate diagnosis. I'm gonna give another example, a personal one for me. As you can see from me wearing these gloves and elbow pads and other materials, I have a chronic pain condition with my arms. The root cause of this is an autoimmune condition known as rheumatoid 
rheumatoid arthritis, and it actually took me five years to get a diagnosis, even though I was in constant pain and unable to understand what was happening to me. Five years might sound like a long time, especially when you're young, but that's actually the average length of time it takes to diagnose rheumatoid arthritis. I don't know how much or which portions of this diagnosis AI could have improved upon, but the fact of the matter is that healthcare right now is very slow when dealing with unusual conditions. You have to go between lots of doctors, lots of experts, take lots of tests, and often be told, I don't know what's wrong. It can be absolutely debilitating. So any improvements in diagnosis would be very welcome. If you're interested in more about my story, I made a separate video about that, which I'll link in the description below. Part two, personalized treatment. After a patient has gotten through the tricky process of getting a diagnosis, then treatment begins. And here, AI can help a lot as well. One of the most interesting things to me is how AI can be used to predict medication efficacy. Let me explain. Right now, when you get a diagnosis, there's usually a first line medication that you should try. And if that doesn't work, there might be five or eight others in the list. But you often have to try those medications for weeks or months at a time before you can conclude that it really is not helping in your case. So what AI can do is predict whether or not your body will respond favorably to a given medication. There was one example of a particular type of cancer, I forget the kind, where AI was able to predict with a 90% success rate whether a patient would respond well to chemotherapy or not, which is fantastic because if you're pretty sure your body is not going to respond to chemotherapy, then maybe you can avoid zapping yourself with radiation. Returning to the example of rheumatoid arthritis, there is a massive study done by Mayo Clinic where they took 775 patients, all of whom had been newly diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and therefore had never taken any type of medication before. And they trained a simple model to predict whether a patient would respond well to methotrexate, which is the first line medication, the first treatment that you try for rheumatoid arthritis typically. It's also a very heavy duty drug having been designed for treating cancer and it has a lot of bad potential side effects. So again, it would be great to know if this medication might actually work for you before you actually start taking it. If the model said you should try the medication, the patient had an 80% success rate at actually getting better from it. While if the model said, hmm, maybe you shouldn't take this medication, only 33% of patients actually felt better from it. The funny thing about this case is it's actually very simple machine learning. There are only 775 data points. That's a lot of patients, but it's peanuts when it comes to training ML algorithms. But even with this very little amount of AI, really useful results can come out of it. You might also have heard of the idea of personalized treatment or personalized medicine. Right now, the term seems to be used to select the right medication based on your gene profile, which can be a pretty good way to treat certain types of cancer, but it doesn't work for all patients. However, in the future, you can imagine AI suggesting much more customized treatment plans from very precise dosage amounts that you should try to potentially entirely new formulations or combinations of drugs based on what's happening in your body. I saw one YouTube video joke that there's always people who will pay $40,000 for a custom treatment, but it's really true. And although the first people might pay $40,000, the cost of those personalized treatments will quickly come down. AI can incorporate more information, consider more alternatives, and just overall have a more comprehensive understanding of your situation than any human doctor can in the 10 minutes that they actually speak with you. Even more interesting, your body could be continuously monitored in some way and the treatment could be dynamically adjusted. Instead of going to the hospital every couple of weeks to get injections when you're dealing with diabetes or vitamin B12 deficiency, if you can have some small sensors embedded in your body or in some portable device, then the model can say, hey, you know, maybe you should increase the dosage or decrease the dosage slightly because of these factors. Or maybe even say, hey, you're about to go to sleep. Maybe I should slightly reduce the amount of medication that your body is getting on an ongoing basis. Another really cool example is that doctors and researchers are always running clinical trials for new treatments. And they usually take five years or a very long time at least to actually get approved and then become mainstream treatments. But an AI system could actually easily find eligible patients for any given trial or study instead of being contacted manually through some third party avenue. I've had different departments call me up and say, would you like to participate in this study? And it might seem like spam at first. It's very inefficient right now. Anyway, with an AI system, it could potentially automatically notify you of upcoming experimental treatments that you may opt to participate in. And that's a huge boon for getting treatments in the hands of patients more rapidly and really accelerating that cycle. Part three, future medical capabilities. The previous two sections focused on things that are already currently happening or are slated for the very near future. But in this section, we're going to relax those requirements a bit and imagine some future technological changes and how that might impact healthcare. I already mentioned having an AI system dynamically adjust your treatment based on the current status of your body, perhaps even multiple times a day as you sleep and exercise and so on. I'm sure diabetics would be very interested in this type of monitoring and adaptation. Anyway, it seems likely to me that we would eventually end up with tiny robots inside our bloodstream that would communicate via Bluetooth or something to a central node that's gathering information. And those sensors, those tiny robots could feed back into the brain of the AI system that's treating 
feeding you. Beyond just measurement, eventually we could get those robots to chemically or physically intervene. Actually, Ray Kurzweil predicted this type of medical nanobot would be a major breakthrough that is coming pretty soon. I think he said sometime in the 2030s. So I'm not completely crazy. Other people have thought about this too. If you have medical nanobots that can not just observe and measure, but actually take action, then it seems like a natural extension to me to get those nanobots to augment or replace your immune system. I know it would be really tricky to get the biological immune system to actually play nicely with robots. So that's the only reason I say replace. You might have to actually take out, sounds risky, take out some of your immune system in order to allow this artificial immune system to take its place. However, there are plenty of people that are immunocompromised that actually don't have an immune system that's operating properly, or people that, like me, have an autoimmune condition, which means your own immune system is actually attacking yourself. So there are many reasons that you might want an artificial immune system. And imagine at that point, if a new virus appears, you can just download a software update and suddenly you're protected against that new pathogen. Or consider when COVID was first coming out, the majority of people that were severely ill and had to be intubated actually had that happen because their own immune system was going into overdrive and essentially clogging up and causing harm to their own breathing system. With an artificial immune system, you could easily modulate the amount of response taking place from the perspective of a central controller rather than each individual nanobot slash white blood cell trying to figure out what it should be doing on its own. I already made another video about BCI devices or brain computer interfaces, which can scan your brain and really figure out what's happening inside it. This type of capability combined with the brain's natural neuroplasticity means that we could probably treat a lot of mental conditions, even potentially severe mental disabilities, because basically the necessary information to actually create new tissue is present in your body. It knows how to do that. The only reason we can't regrow arms right now is that the body basically runs through those instructions only once when you're growing up. But in theory, the ability to regrow lost tissue, regrow lost limbs, injured sensory organs, eyes, ears, etc. All that information is present. It's just never triggered because there was never any evolutionary pressure for ordinary humans to actually regrow an eye. It would just be very difficult for that to evolve. But if you look at simpler creatures, for example, some jellyfish, they actually regress into a sort of childlike state periodically throughout their lives, and then they regrow into adulthood. By doing this, they actually destroy any damaged cells, and the cells can be recreated. Theoretically, these types of jellyfish could live forever, or at least they don't die of aging because they don't really have that constant slow breakdown of cells that eventually leads to old age. We could in theory achieve something similar by changing which genes get expressed and how. Anyway, there's lots of stuff online about increasing human longevity, and I'm not going to go into that for this video. I think what is potentially the most powerful ability that AI will give us though, and this is also something mentioned by Ray Kurzweil, is the ability to simulate an entire human system. In other words, simulate your whole body along with all the interactions of all the cells that belong to your body or that might be pathogens or that might be drug cells. If you're simulating a generic human, then this lets you actually create new drugs and test them without clinical trials or with very scaled back clinical trials. You probably already know that a lot of the COVID vaccines were actually created by AI, essentially. The Moderna vaccine was created in just a few days. The rest of that process was actually the clinical trials because we don't really have a way of simulating an entire human being yet. The more advanced version of that is an entire simulation of you, of your own body, where you could predict whether taking a certain medication would lead to side effects in your own body, determining potential future illnesses by running the simulation forward many, many years, maybe even effectively counteracting addictions from physiological addictions to other medications, which means that the more heavy duty medications become more attractive to take if you can actually counteract some of their problems. I personally would be very interested in seeing an AI system look at my brain scans to figure out how and where chronic pain is originating because we don't really know and brain scans are so noisy that it would be almost impossible for a human to pick that out. But if you could identify that portion of the brain and develop targeted medications or localized treatments that act in a very specific way, I think you could really modulate people's experience of the world if needed to treat some of the most difficult conditions that we don't have any hope of treating right now. In conclusion, AI can really help when it comes to diagnosing illnesses, decreasing the amount of time it takes before someone gets a valid diagnosis, and identifying diseases more accurately as well as more rapidly. That's already happening. In fact, I've read in some places that radiology as a profession might cease to exist for humans within a couple of years because AI is just extremely good at this. We just have to train a lot of models. And once you have models trained for most conditions out there, you're pretty much good to go. AI is also extremely helpful when it comes to treatment, treatment plans, drug dosing, that sort of thing. You can already use models to predict whether a given person is going to respond well to certain treatment. And in the future, we might be getting into like dynamic adaptation of the treatment given to a patient. Finally, the future is almost unimaginable when it comes to medical technology.
technology. I'm especially excited for medical nanobots that might be throughout our bloodstream, reporting on our health and maybe taking small interventions on our behalf. And artificial immune systems would basically make us cyborgs, don't you think? If you liked this video, please check out this previous one I made where I talk about my story, the story of my illness, rheumatoid arthritis and all that. It should be an interesting compliment to this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, of course. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.